Hi, I'm Ajit Andare. I run the films business, uh, the business of motion pictures at Viacom ATV. How do you think digital disruption is changing the entertainment market? I think fundamentally what uh, digital disruption is doing is solving the biggest problem uh, that has always sort of riddled this industry and that's, that's one of distribution. Uh, take the example of uh, films, you know. If you've got to go to a theater, the kind of cost hurdle that is in front of you uh, includes the cost of you know reaching the theater, your parking, your vehicle, the expensive samosas and popcorns that you consume, and then the ticket, right? Uh, and it, and it is an event business. You need to go to the event. Uh, I think what digital is doing is there is always going to be only so many people who will come to this channel to experience the film in a theater. What digital is going to do is 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 open up new avenues, uh, open up new channels in which that content which can be consumed outside of the mainstream experience in theater itself. So what happens to the theater? Theater will prosper on its own. That channel has still a huge amount of headroom to grow in India. But I think content in general will become far better distributed. It will be available at possibly a much lower cost and certainly at a much higher convenience of being able to consume at any screen any, any time. So I think uh, you know, you, you usually hear content is king, but distribution is God, you know. So I think what is happening as, as God is expressing itself more and more by, by distribution being digitally enabled, I think content as king will also prosper a lot more and will be able to walk the road sort of much, much, uh, much more easily than it has been in the past. Two things that will visibly change as far as distribution is concerned uh, in the near future. I think access clearly. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you can already see uh, the access of and the consumption of films and the penetration of any kind of content is actually uh, increasing multifolds. Uh, uh, number two is the is the newer forms of video content. You know, uh, you are already seeing a new ecosystem which is evolving. When the television industry boomed, you know, a 30-minute viewing window emerged right out of nowhere, and we all started becoming appointment viewers of the 30-minute program. I think as the OTTs uh, start to take shape, you will now see a new ecosystem in which a completely new set of players are going to be making content, a new a new format duration, new a, a, a new uh, format, a new duration, and a completely new ecosystem of how content gets consumed and uh, exhibited. Uh, so far, most of the OTTs are actually providing uh, content for free. Uh, at least that's uh, uh, you know to start with. How long do you see uh, uh, people accessing free content and when will it actually be paid for? Yeah, so as I think uh, it was pointed out earlier as well, uh, people when they pay through data plans are actually paying for the content. So it's not first of all absolutely free. Secondly, I think uh, as you uh, get into multiple channels and multiple packages within an overall advertising driven platform. There is an ample scope of driving a freemium model. There is an ample scope of, uh, you know, uh, charging for content. I think, take the example, not from a digital, but another play. We all used to watch Doordarshan on Terrestrial. I don't think we ever paid anything for it. Then came cable and we started paying something for it. Why did we pay? Because there was an improvement in terms of technological, you know, experience for the consumer and the array of programs that was visible. We paid for it. Then came uh, direct to home, and we all started consuming there. Another technological inflection point, another improvement in consumer experience. So I think clearly, if you're able to offer something meaningful to the consumer, whether by way of overall experience or by way of technology, consumer is always paid. You know, He may not pay on day one, but he eventually does pay. So I think what you're seeing is starting off a new cycle of, uh, of, of, uh, of distribution, of exhibition, which is through uh, the OTTs. And this cycle will see its natural course where monetization will certainly come into play. Uh, and when I say monetization, I mean direct monetization, direct subscription and payment outside of advertising revenue, which is most certainly going to follow as viewership builds up on the digital platforms. Uh, what is the kind of uh, role that regional content will play? You know, all large broadcasters, you can see, clearly have a strong bouquet of uh, regional channels are already in the process of building. 
and uh, you will see the same thing play out even in OTT because you know a whole lot of viewers out there are sitting in what is called the non-mainstream languages. They need to be connected, they need to be entertained and uh, uh, you know and, and that becomes a natural wave of growth uh, as, as you know as, as more and more regional consumers get digital. So the media uh, and entertainment sector is changing fast. As a leader of a media and entertainment company, uh, what are the kind of uh, uh, you know skills that that you personally feel that you need to keep developing to keep pace with these changes? I think one one of the fundamental aspects of this industry is that it's a consumer-facing business. So I think the first thing that you need to be completely in tune with is the, is the fast-changing consumer. Uh, and therefore, uh, a consumer orientation is, is something that I would advocate is the first skill that you need in any consumer business. I think the second one uh, which now you need to uh, keep pace with is really the changing technology and the new platforms that are emerging and how consumer is consuming the same content in a different platform. I think that allows you or that, that throws up a, a new level of insights into how can you serve uh, a, a product in a different way or a new product to the same consumer, you know. So I think consumer orientation, awareness of technology. And third is, uh, is clearly the ability to take some very interesting creative risks, which are very germane, uh, you know, to, to, to the media industry because we are not, we are not soaps or, or cars or shoes. We are, we are making uh, cultural products. We are making products which connect with people. So I think you have to have the ability to be able to take uh, new risks in terms of content, in terms of the innovation that you uh, carry out. And uh, if you're able to be consumer oriented, you understand technology and you have within yourself to be able to take risks. I think those three, I think would keep you in good stead.